And the next group is the Coalition for Nuclear Safety with a total of four speakers, totaling up to a talk, a talk time of eight minutes. First up, we will have Dave Rice, followed by Kathy Iwane, followed by Alice McNally. Mr. Rice, whenever you're ready, please remember to unmute yourself and state your name for the record. Yeah, good morning, Mr. Chair. And just before we start the clock, may I just confirm that uh, my group members are all on board and present here? I actually can't locate Kathy and Bart Ziegler. So Let's see. Okay, uh, yeah, I was a, a I was a little concerned that uh, they might have some some issues. I'm not sure if, um, uh, what happened on this. My Zoom uh, session changed just recently to move uh, from what was on where I didn't have the video options to now having the um, the video and the mute options. They're on my. They're I on promoted my you as a panelist, so now you should be able to share your video. Oh, so so hopefully they have the same thing. So I, I actually can't locate them on the attendee list. The only person on your group that I've located is Alice McNally, and the I have not been able to find Kathy or Bart. Okay, um, I believe they're listening, so I am just going to ask them to raise their hand and and uh, and and show themselves to you if they can. Yes, that would be helpful. Thank you. Okay, very good. I'll go ahead. Uh, I'll go ahead and begin then. And <clears throat> um, I want to thank uh, you, commissioners, for this opportunity to present our concerns to you. My name is Dave Rice. I'm a private citizen living in South Orange County. I've been working with the Coalition for Nuclear Safety and other groups represented here on this important problem. I was also part of the Mike Levin Task Force. We are science, education, and business professional volunteers to fight back against an untenable situation that our federal government has put us all in including all of you with the Coastal Commission. Your special condition seven states that fuel storage canisters must remain in a physical condition sufficient to allow both on-site transfer and off-site transport for the duration of the approval until October, 2035, a term you set due to your concerns over predicted sea level rise, this has been mentioned. While Edison may be arguing that they can move the canisters at some point to the current location of the cooling pools once they're dismantled, there's no way they can justify moving them off-site in their current condition for many reasons including the inability to properly inspect and repair as has been discussed by many others. The Department of Energy's Nuclear Waste Techni ne Technical Review Board's 2019 report says, spent nuclear fuel canisters holding 37 assemblies, which are both used at San Onofre and most other sites in the US, will be too hot to move until the year 2100 and less repackaged. There is also no rail car or rail line that can safely handle the current size of these Holtec canisters. The only remedy to this is for Edison to commit to installing a suitable hot cell to be used for this repackaging purpose in order to meet the Coastal Commission's actual requirements. To properly transport the waste, the fuel assemblies must be repackaged into smaller, thicker casts that are truly transportable. And in the meantime, will offer better protection, such as built-in radiation monitoring, ability for repairs and repackaging as needed. Please amend your staff's recommendation for approving this inadequate plan that Edison has proposed and make this hot cell required as part of the approved plan should the cooling pools be dismantled. Otherwise, the plan is clearly out of scope and will not meet your stated requirements. Also, the settlement terms from the Citizens Oversight lawsuit call for Edison to develop a conceptual transportation plan to transport the nuclear fuel to an offsite storage. It is irresponsible for the Coastal Commission to approve the current plan as is without also having this thoroughly vetted transportation plan. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Rice. At this moment, I believe we have located Kathy Iwane, and I believe, Ms. Iwane, you are under the Samuel Lawrence Foundation. At the, you are now in the meeting, so if this is you, please unmute yourself and state your name for the record. Ms. Iwane, if um, you are in the meeting, please um, state your name for the record. She, um, Mr. Chairman, she has just texted me and uh, said that for some reason she can't get on. I believe I have her speech. Uh, Bart Ziegler, good morning, Chair and Commissioners of the California Coastal Commission. I'm here with the Coalition for Nuclear Safety. My scientific expertise in, is the chemistry of a wide range of environmental pollutants. I'm trained as a toxicologist. My PhD is in community and environmental medicine from UC Irvine. Edison's deployment of four standard $1,800 Geiger counters 
fall short of real-time monitoring radiation leaks. My review of the coastal development permit and all reports before us led me to conclude that the applicant's inspection and maintenance program doesn't meet condition seven and poses tremendous harm to the coast. I urge you vote no. The applicant's program does not include a handling facility to repair and repackage waste from damaged canisters. The permit would be acceptable were amended to require the applicant to retain spent fuel pools until the handling facility hot cell is constructed on site. Any other decision is insufficient to deal with aging or radioactive uh, damaged waste containers, which pose an environmental hazard on a global scale. Past Tuesday, your staff received a letter from Admiral Herring, which charges your staff with lack of research and use of uh, prejudicial reports from the applicant's LPI, while ignoring the uh, DOE report to inform your commission prior to casting uh, votes. On behalf of our community, uh, Admiral Herring requests a delay of your vote. We all know the pressure you're under. Commissioners, your duty and responsibility to our community, family, your friends, and our state requires you to ensure the failed storage system is perfect and secure for generations to come, or at least 24,000 uh, years of the half-life of plutonium. Don't risk our California coastline for a Band-Aid fix that will fail. Require the applicant do better. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Ziegler. Um, we still haven't found Kathy, but I will try and look again. Just, this might take a moment. If we can't locate Kathy, Mr. Rice, you may need to read her testimony if you choose, and that should, I think, wrap up that this particular group. Okay. Um, Kathy? You're not on? She just texted me saying she got in on her phone, but I can go ahead. And I appreciate your patience. Um, hello, I'm Kathy Awani, a private citizen living in Del Mar, San Diego, after evacuating my family in 2012 due to the Fukushima triple meltdowns. I work with the Coalition for Nuclear Safety and other local groups. I urge you to oppose um, SCE's Coastal Development Permit with the California Coastal Commission for Proposed Inspection Maintenance Program. Edison's management plan for storing 3.6 million pounds of nuclear waste at San Onofre must absolutely include an on-site handling facility before the spent fuel pools are torn down. Decommissioning the spent fuel pools without a validated on-site handling response facility is irresponsible. Why? Edison has no emergency response plan should a damaged canister breach by accident. Upon questioning by Congressman Mike Levin, SCE Vice President Doug Bowder responded that in 2015, the NRC eliminated the requirement for songs specific off-site emergency plans by approving the song's permanently defueled emergency plan. And yet in August 2018, Edison came within a quarter inch of letting a 52-ton canister freefall 18 feet into the dry storage vault. Retaining the spent fuel pools is the last option for dealing with a damaged canister. It's also a last resort to repackaging waste for off-site transportation. Dr. Greg Yasko, former chairman of the NRC, tells us that on-site storage of spent fuel and songs is expected for an indefinite period of time. Yet Edison has no plan for damaged nuclear waste storage canisters not fit for offsite transportation. Additionally, the canister repair procedure proposed by Edison has not been tested nor is approved by the American Society of Mechanical Engineers. Commissioners, please uphold your mission to protect our coastal environment and future generations for, from potential widespread contamination without adding the condition of retaining the spent fuel pools and building an onsite handling facility. You are woefully ignoring your mission. Thank you very much. Thank you.